الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومولاه اللهم علمنا ما فعنا وفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما yeah, We've been going through these uh, lessons of seerah enjoying the seerah of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم how he and his companions established the first Muslim community the greatest community ever to take place on earth. And I was reading through the seerah, a question to, came to my mind, which is, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the Ansar so much? Why many ayahs in the Quran were mentioned about the Ansar? والذين تبوا الدار والإيمان من بعدهم يحبون من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا. And how the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in many occasions that he loved the Ansar so much. How he mentioned when he was in Mecca, if I were not from Quraysh, I would have chosen to be from the Ansar. And all these. issues about the Ansar. And I started looking. Yeah, we know a lot about the Ansar. But we really need to analyze the situations. We need to look deep into what they have done to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his companions. We know they sacrificed everything for the sake of Allah and the sake of protecting Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and after signing the allegiance of the second Aqaba. They gave protection. They gave all they could to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and said, what can you get from you, O Prophet of Allah? He said, Al-Jannah. I cannot reward you with anything on earth. I, Allah rewards you. So you go into uh, what really attracted my attention, the words of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. You know, Anas, when the Prophet Sallallahu came to Medina, he was 10 years old young child but that young child was having a very inquisitive mind a very inquisitive mind his observation of what goes around him was very keen and his analysis was really fascinating so he said when the Prophet Sallallahu first came to Medina he made Mu'akha brotherhood between Muhajireen and Ansar in our house, in the house of Umm Salim, in the house of Abu Talha. He said the Prophet وسلم, made brotherhood between Abdul Rahman ibn Awf and Sa'd ibn Rabi' in our house. He made brotherhood between Abu Ubaidah, Abd ibn Jarrah radiallahu an, and Abu Talha radiallahu an, in our house. And I was wondering to what extent the Ansar loved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To what extent that they were ready to sacrifice everything. Even their own children they gave them to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Ummu Salim found nothing to give because she was a widow. She had nothing. She had only Anas and Al-Bara. And Al-Bara was younger than Anas. She couldn't give anything. She said, Oh Rasulullah, I am a widow woman. I have nothing to give. But I gave you the most precious commodity of life. The most precious gift of God, Anas, to serve you. This is why we shouldn't wonder why the Prophet Sallallahu loved the Ansar. Why Allah loved the Ansar and mentioned them in the Quran. And we keep mentioning them in our lives. You've got to realize, our brothers, that Anas also said that the Ansar came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying to him, our brothers from Mecca came to us. They were persecuted. They were tortured. All properties, their properties were taken away from them. And we want to divide our palm trees between us and them. Uh, Juan, you've got to realize what a palm tree means to a farmer. 
a palm tree sometimes is 200, 150 years old. I mean, three, four, five generations of the same family were taking care of that tree. Three, four, five generations were getting fruit from that tree. It's not ready to give away. It's not easy to give part of your own entity and your own identity. The palm tree is not only a tree like any other tree. It's a tree, it's not planted, it was not planted on the land of the Ansar. It was planted in their hearts. So they were ready to sacrifice the half of their wealth. Nobody asked them to do that, but they did it. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talked about them in the Quran, وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا A generous person gives extra what, what they don't need. But the Ansar were more generous than the most generous because they were giving what they needed. They were dividing their own wealth. It's not only money that you have or clothes that you wear and throw away. It is a palm tree that your four, four, four fathers, great forefathers planted one generation after another were taken care of. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day was passing by one of the roads of Medina and he saw a group of the Ansar, women and children, they were singing, chanting after marriage. And the Prophet said, Oh Allah, I love the Ansar and the children of the Ansar. Oh Allah, I love the Ansar. Oh, love them, oh Allah. And they were hearing the dua of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And the one who reported this said, the Ansar became happier with the dua of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than their own joy with that wedding. Those people love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions to, to an extent that we cannot describe here. We cannot describe. One night, poor, a poor man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he spoke to his wife Aisha. Do we have something for the guests? He spoke to Sauda radiallahu anha. Do you have something for the guests? There was an Ansari. He said, do you have something for the guest of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, yes, O Rasulullah. He took him home with him. Look what happened. When he took this man home, he spoke to his wife. He said, we need to feed the guest of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the Prophet's guest. It's not our guest only. He said, by Allah, we don't have anything but the food of the children. He said, then bring the food of the children and make the children busy until they sleep. So we realize how those people really sacrificed and how much we think we have been sacrificing for the sake of Allah. How little. I couldn't say how much. How little. If there is anything that we do for the sake of Allah. So she brought the food. She sat and the guest was sitting. And the, This is before hijab. And her husband was sitting. And she was bringing lantern. You know lantern? Siraj. Oil. You know. But when she got there, because the food would not be enough for three of them. She blew it out. Oh, our light has gone away. Let's eat. So the guest was eating, thinking that, and he was the only one who was eating. Did they go next morning to Prophet Muhammad to say, hey, see what we have done to your guest. We turned the light off. We gave him the food of our children. They didn't do that. But revelation came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Allah is laughing at what you did last night to your guest. Allah knew what we did. Subhanallah. You see how the Ansar were dealing with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now this is the, how they dealt with the guests that they didn't know. Somebody came from outskirts of Medina and the Prophet ﷺ didn't have anything for him to feed him. The Ansar in the battle of Uhud 
died in protecting the Prophet Sallallahu with their own bodies, one after the other, 11 of them, one after the other, were dying in front of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They couldn't do it with the swords and the shield, they did it with their bodies. This is just to give you a glimpse of how Allah, and why Allah, why His Prophet, why the believers until the Day of Judgment love the Ansar. They love them for what they have done for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is many of the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say, we love the grandchildren of the Ansar because of what their grandparents have done to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. غفر الله لي ولكم وجمعنا وإياكم بذاك الركب العظيم في جنات عدن مع نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والمهاجرين والأنصار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله